It's raining and we kind of missed high or low tide. So we'll see if we can still find oysters. If not, we might just go to an oyster restaurant around here. We'll take you along with us so you can see if we find anything. It's raining. We didn't prepare for this. It's sprinkling heavily. Enough that it's like wet outside. Hi, Manny. Oops. You can see lots of oyster shells on the ground, but I don't know if we'll be able to find any. Are you gonna do it? Yeah. did it. <gasps> oh man. Where's the lemon? <laughs> it's in my bag. Oh my gosh, we got one. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know. <really> yeah. <laughs> I want to try. I think there's one here. Should I do a fatty? <laughs> 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 Huge. Okay, I'm just gonna do this small one. Cheers again. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So we did it. We found oysters and ate them. We brought our little shucker and my ski glove. <laughs> Some of the shells here can be pretty sharp, so people usually have like oyster shucking gloves, but we just brought this key glove because it's nice and thick. Anthony is getting our Ziploc bag now, so we can get more oysters. So we can get 18 oysters. We each had one already, so 17 more. And then once we find them, we have to shuck them and leave the shells on the beach so that oysters can use the shells again. We'll see how many more we eat out of the shell. We'll probably do at least one more. We have a lemon with us, so we'll eat them with some lemon and Tabasco, and then the rest of them we'll just bring with us. So this is an oyster with some other shells on it. You can kind of see like these shells are like growing onto this one. Is that how oysters are formed? I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, you can see there's some that are like clustered together. Ooh, this one looks like that's from a restaurant. And then yeah, all the other shucked oysters are out here. But you can see these are all oyster shells. All right here. There's so many. Anthony and Manny are all the way over there. Oh. Big boy. <laughs> see that, Manny? Wow. I literally had to like push down on the ground on this one and lift it up, but now it's open. No. No. Picked up some food from a diner. Eating it while we're waiting for the ferry. <laughs> Why are you singing like that, Manny? Oh. <laughs> Look at our oysters. Yeah, they look really gross. <laughs> With the oyster juice.
Thank you so much for watching my catch and cook vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I present to you Kelly's Guide to Oystering for Beginners by a Beginner. So this is my first and only time that I've gone oystering, but we were successful. So I wanted to kind of share what I learned so that hopefully you're able to go oystering for yourself. I'll walk you through like all the steps that I would go through if I wanted to see if we could go oystering again. But first we'll start off with what you need slash what you need to know. So first of all, you'll need a shell fishing license. You'll need to know what day you can go, where you can go, and then what time of day to go. So we will do that together. So everything that you need to know for like fishing, oystering, clamming, you can find all of that information on the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife's website, WDFW. So there's like different types of licenses that you get. Uh, the one that I have, is the annual, I think this one, yeah. So I have the annual shellfish and seaweed license. So you can buy this online. I bought mine at a Fred Meyer, which is a grocery store nearby. Tip though. <laughs> so I don't have my Washington license yet. I still have my California one. And when I bought my license, I had to pay for the non-resident fee. So highly recommend that you show that you live in Washington so that you get to the resident cost for this. I believe Anthony has the annual combo fishing and shell fishing license since he goes fishing pretty often. So I wanna know when I can go. So with oystering, there are like certain times of year that are best to go. WDFW has a, they have this guide where they list all these public beaches and then when they're open for clams, mussels, and oysters, and then when they're only open for oysters. So if I wanted to go oystering next weekend, that would be January, mid-January, uh, then I could go to Dosi Wallops, anywhere, I guess anywhere in the blue or green. We could even go clamming. Okay, so once you have the list of places that you could potentially go, you need to look at each individual beach to see if they're open for oystering or clamming. So this is like when the season is open, but depending on like the water conditions and everything like that, that specific beach or state park might not be open. So you need to check every single one. So you can see here it's open. And then with each beach too, they'll say like what is usually abundant in the area. So here you can see it's like Manila, Little Neck Clams. Oh yeah, and it's a good place for oysters. So this is like something that I would consider going to. Let's see what else. Dash Point State Park, this is a park in like the Tacoma area. So it's pretty close to Seattle. Good to know that it's open. Um, horse clams, see, and then you can see here like oysters aren't common here. So obviously like it wouldn't go there for oysters. Clams, too low to, but it's an excellent oyster beach. Okay. So yeah, I would repeat the same thing for basically everything that is open for oystering and kind of narrow down this list to places that we could go. And then from there, looking up where these places are on the map. So most of the oystering and clamming spots that I've noticed are usually like in the Hood Canal area. So over here, there are some in this area, like this is kind of where we went clamming last season. Uh, and then there are a couple more that are like more north up here, like towards Bellingham and everything like that. Um, but I've never been around here. And then in the Hood Canal area, that's where we went oystering in this vlog. So we have our license, we have a place to go, or we know when we can go, like next weekend, we could go to Dosi Wallop State Park. So now I don't know what time of day to go. And that is where the tides information should be helpful. So they have this low tide prediction chart, which is super helpful. And it'll tell you when there's the daylight low tide. And then they'll tell you which ones are good for clams and oysters and good for gooey ducks. So you can see there are more options available during spring, summer, and fall, just because there's like more daylight, obviously. But since I wanna go in January, so this is what I did for our oystering trip in this vlog because it was in October, so it wasn't listed in the 2021 low tide chart. So I went to this website. So let's say we wanted to go to Dosi Wallops. I would pick the tide 
or whatever this is. I don't know what these are called, um, but I would pick the point that's closest to where I'm gonna go. So that would be here, Pleasant Harbor. Um, and you can see, let's say we wanted to go next weekend. So that would be the 14th. Let's do 14th to the 18th. Cause I know that I want to go next weekend, but I don't know when would be the best day to go. Cause maybe the low tide during the day at one point is better than uh, the other days. So you can see down here, 9 29 p.m is low tide this is the daytime low tide uh but that is still too much on this chart i'm looking for for the tides to be between like 1.5 or i guess like yeah 1.5 is the highest that i would want it to be anything lower would be ideal so this would be a good time but that is late uh i don't know if i would go <laughs> this weekend but this daytime low up here would be too high still because it's still 8.49 feet so you can see there's no good like daytime low next weekend maybe we could see if the weekend after that is possible let me double check if they are open and they are so here isn't really much better but basically this is like what you're gonna wanna use to see what the daytime low is so you know what time of day to go. So once you are gonna go oystering, what you'll need to bring are a thick glove or like a thick rag that you can kind of like fold. And the reason for that is because the oysters there can be kind of sharp. They aren't as like smooth and nice looking as the ones from a restaurant. So you just wanna be able to protect your hand from when you're like prying the oyster open and then you'll also want an oyster shucker which you can get from amazon and i have a link to one in the description box below if you want to check it out and then you should also bring a jar or a ziploc bag or like a bucket or something something to store your shucked oysters when you do go oystering you have to shuck them on the beach so that you can leave the shells there so you'll just bring back the oyster juice and like the oysters themselves oh yeah and then you also need to know what the how many you can get because there's a limit that you can get per license so there's a minimum size that they need to be two and a half inches measured across the longest distance of the shell and then the daily limit is 18. so just check this page for all the rules and regulations and everything like that before you go so I hope that this beginner's guide to oystering was helpful to you all. Good luck with oystering. And if you catch any, tag me on Instagram because I would want to see all of your successful harvests. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have anything to say. I have a lot of other videos on our outdoor adventures that we've done here in Washington, including clamming last season. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave links to those vlogs in the description below. And I hope you all have a good day. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.